I think I just have such like an ingrained fear of embarrassing myself in front of Japanese people. Oh, so you overdo it. Yeah. Uh... I'm Rie. I was born in Japan and raised in Japan. Hey, I'm Sean, and I am not from Japan, but I'm fourth generation Japanese American. This is the 10 ways you are traveling in Japan wrong. Like a disapproving Asian mom. Yaji Asian mom. Telling you why you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Let's get to it! Number one, sticking your chopsticks in a bowl of rice. So to me, this is very 101. This isn't even a you have to be in Japan to do this wrong. This is something that I think across East Asia is pretty uniform. Don't stick your chopsticks upright because it looks like incense at a funeral. Have you ever seen people do that though? I see people do it in noodles a lot. I also see people do a lot of things with chopsticks that I'm a little like... Judgy? You're yeah. a judgy Asian mom. <laughs> So if you want to put your chopsticks down, typically there will be a chopstick holder, or you can perch it on the side of your bowl, or Google how to fold a chopstick holder out of a chopstick sleeve and use that to rest it on. Wow. <laughs> you know more than me. <laughs> and I think it just looks like a bad manner. Yeah, it just looks bad. Yeah, like, like, would you stick your fork upright in your... Yeah, do you do that? Don't do that, yeah. Number two, wearing shoes inside someone's home. I feel like it's also another Asian yeah. thing. So we take off shoes when you get inside of the house. I don't know why. <laughs> I just grown up with it. And also like Japanese household, there is a entrance is a little higher. It's like designed for taking off shoes. This is another thing I realized. So if you go to some clothing store and you're trying on dress or trying on clothes, you also have to take off shoes when you get inside of changing. How do you say? Oh, the, really? Yeah. How do you call oh. it? It's not changing room. Yeah, fitting room. Fitting room. And I saw a lot of shop staff was asking, please take off your shoes, but I'm not sure if tourists does understand Japanese, but you know, like I... Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe anybody would do that. That sounds... <laughs> like a total new <laughs> move. They will give you some cloths and you uh, wear, like you kind of put it, cover your face so makeup doesn't transfer to the clothes, you know? Yeah. yeah. I will say with the home thing, that just feels like a cleanliness thing. Like why would you wear your shoes in the house? It ups the amount of sweeping you have to do mm -hmm. by so much. Number three, having loud conversations on public transportation. I usually just don't talk on the train, but Same. yes, in Japan, don't do that. Yeah, I don't usually do that either because yeah. I don't want people to listen to my conversation. Yeah. I think train etiquette in general, there's a lot that a lot of people don't know about and mm -hmm. they don't think about. I know for me, uh, I was in Japan and I uh, got called a foreigner because I was standing on the wrong place on the platform, but the guy who yelled at me didn't realize I could speak Japanese. And so I stared him down and he... <laughs> got very uncomfortable. <laughs> but that's true though, like if you are waiting train, you have to wait in line. Yes. And I feel like that is very different from New York, like subway system. Also, if you are uh, male identified, make sure that you are getting on the right car because there are cars that are for female folks only. And I made that mistake and it was a very embarrassing five minutes. This is very embarrassing about Japan. Like there is Harvard touching women that happened quite often. So train company decided to make women only car. So make sure you read the signs. Number four, eating on the train. It's kind of rude to eat stuff in public space. You can eat in Shinkansen or like long distance train called bullet train because they sell ekiben, which is like station bento. But if you are just riding on a local train, most likely you won't see anybody eating and you don't want to do that and you will be spotted. Number five, eating and walking in public. I do this. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like eating especially, drinking, like I see people like drinking and walking. Public space especially, you don't want to do that. I don't know why, <laughs> but I think it's the manner and the etiquette. Like I grown up not doing it, so like I never question myself doing it. My usual move is to buy food and then huddle against a wall, like... <laughs> 
like this. <laughs> just, I don't. You don't it. need to do it. You don't need to do it. You just go to like park or like some like there is an area you can sit down. You know, like bench. I think I just have such like an ingrained fear of embarrassing myself in front of Japanese people. Oh, so you overdo it. Yeah. Uh... Number six, handing money to the cashier instead of putting it in the tray. Would they be mad if you just handed them the, the money? I don't think they would be mad, but if you're wondering right. what it's this tray for, that it's for money. Shopping in Japan is kind of like a whole ritual of sorts. There's this concept of omotenashi, which is kind of like hospitality that exists like really deeply embedded in Japanese culture. And then there's like a whole ritual of putting the money on the tray, and then they take the money, and then they show you your change, and then they put the money back on the tray, and then they give it back to you, and then they put your things in the bag, and then they seal the bag, and then they hand you the sealed bag, and then they bow, and then you're on your way. It's a whole thing. <laughs> Number seven, don't assume that there's always going to be a trash can because there's not always going to be a trash can. And sometimes when there is a trash can, there's like 20 of them. Japan is really good with trash. So not only are there very few trash cans, which means that you're expected to carry it with you. Also, there's a bunch of different types of recycling that happen. Most likely, there is a graphic about this is for recycle, this is for newspaper, this is for... Bottles. Yeah. This so... is for caps. Yeah. <laughs> There's a can for bottles and a can for bottle caps. Mm. It's a lot. Number eight, going to onsens with a tattoo. Tattoo is associated with Yakuza, which is like gang members. A lot of onsen or public bus, they don't allow people with tattoos. But I feel like it's changing a little bit because we have a lot of foreigners with tattoos. But um, it used to be a thing. I will say one of the reasons why I don't have a tattoo is because I don't <laughs> want to be banned from Me the Me too, outside. yeah, same. Like I've thought about getting tattoos and oh. then I think, oh no, I can't yeah. go to right. onsen. So. Onsen is great. Also onsen, you gonna be completely naked and I feel like that is a Japanese culture. We we don't think twice, but um, for foreigners, it's maybe a little bit embarrassing because like most likely you're traveling with your friends. But just enjoy, just follow our custom and enjoy onsen. Onsen is amazing. They're very hot, very hot. Mm. Number nine, tipping in a restaurant. You don't need to worry about that. Just like say, you know, show appreciation like with words like arigato is thank you. Do you feel like people who work in restaurants in Japan mm -hmm. when they come to America get a little jealous that people get extra money on top of the minimum wage? The minimum wage. <laughs> 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 I mm. have you worked in a restaurant in Japan? Yeah, most. Yeah, Japan here. Yeah. Were you paid better in Japan than you were in America? No, usually like waiting table is minimum wage, so less than. $10? Oh. Do you feel like in Japan they should tip? I don't know. I don't like people being nice to me because they are paying for me, you know? As you mentioned earlier, omotenashi is kind of rooted in Japanese culture and it shouldn't be exchanged with currency. Like an extra charge? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Number 10, only staying in Tokyo when you go to Japan. Japan is large. Well, it's not that large, but it's pretty diverse in terms of regions. Every region has a distinct culture and every region has a distinct vibe. And it's to the point where different regions even have different dialects and languages. Every region in Japan has something that they're known for. It can be something like a meibutsu, which is like a food, or a meisho, which is like a place. Ria, where are you from? Hiroshima. What's the meibutsu in Hiroshima? Momiji manju, what, which what is, is a, like a maple-shaped sweet bean confectionery. If you want to get a better sense for places to explore, check that out. These are just our tips. There are many more that we could go on at length on. These are the general ones to keep in mind. If you have any others that you know of or that you have questions about, comment below. Comment below. And we'll see it. Yeah. Thank you for watching and have a safe and fun travel to Japan. Matane! Matane!